Hello. Oh, my name's Beck, William Beck. Any chance the doctor's in this late? Oh, I'm afraid not, Mr. Beck. Are you a patient of his? Oh, I met him once, is all the other night over in Berkeley. Oh, are you at the university? Uh, well, sort of, sort of visiting there. There's a big powwow going on. Well, I, uh, I've been hitting the work pretty hard. Uh, tense, no sleep, need something to knock me out. Well, don't look at me like that. I'm, I'm not a, what do you call it, a goofball addict or anything. I'm just a, just a sleepy fella. I can't fall asleep. You tried lying down? Sometimes that helps. Yes, I tried lying down, hot baths, a couple of hundred aspirin. <laughs> when you're a kid, it doesn't worry you. You miss three or four days sleep, but as you grow older... Three or four days? Uh, three and three quarters so far. Oh, don't worry. It's, it's just what they call a, a non-sleep syndrome. I've had them before. You take a seat over there. I'll see if I can catch the doctor at home. Kid, it doesn't worry you miss three or four days sleep, but it's as you get older. Shh, take it easy. We played that side. Simmer down. He's not there. Do you uh, think it might help any if I rub the back of your neck? I, I, I rub a pretty good neck. Oh, uh, oh sure. Are uh, you one of the visiting geniuses? Big thing in the afternoon paper. Symposium of geniuses over at the university. <laughs> if you can count the papers, call you a genius. You don't look like a genius. I didn't bring my glasses. <laughs> Never missed eight hours sleep in my life. What do you do all night? Last night I took up Spanish. Buenas noches, senorita. I suppose you tried taking a drink. Oh, I got through college playing and coaching football. Can't always stay away from alcohol. Oh, well, you're a big boy now. Nice double dry martini might put you to sleep. Is, um, is this doing any good? Well, it's kind of brightening up my day. I usually get better results. Oh, why dry? Oh, why particularly a dry martini? Oh, it tastes better. That is to me. Of course, you're drinking it. I... I don't suppose that... Hmm? Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Oh, uh... Well, you'll tell the doctor that, that Bill Beck, uh... Bill Beck. Yeah. And I'm very... Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Hello, Kathy. It's Julie. Would you put my calls on the exchange, please? I have to leave a little bit early. Sit up with a sick friend. Thanks. Say, I wonder if you... I'd love to. You look like a man who's missed some sleep, but not all that much. What you can't tell is that normally I'm about an inch and a half taller. <laughs> Tell me, uh, what kind of a scientist are you? Theoretical physicist. Now, right now, I'm on a government thing. Guided missile program to have us all out here on. Uh, it's funny, I usually have trouble getting talking to people. Silent Sam, they call me. <laughs> Name's Bill. Oh, oh, I said that. Well, I usually have trouble getting rubbing necks. Name's Julie. One double martini, very dry. No, triple. No. Thank you. Always gives me a cheerful feeling to know there's a nice, quiet, lazy place like this hidden in the building. Oh, you, uh, you partial to bars? Well, actually, I'm a recruiter for the distilleries, in charge of pushing martinis. Oh. oh Music? <laughs> You're fine. Wrong button. Sounds very nice. Which one of you is leaving us? 
Bon voyage, buddy. <laughs> Thing wrong here is the light isn't bright enough to see you clearly. Oh, you're a remarkably attractive girl. You're a remarkably screwy fella. I think I'm blushing. I'm doing something. My pores are open. Where do you come from? Nebraska. Dad has a farm there. You? I was born in an oil tanker at sea. My father was a sea captain, taught me basic astronomy, which is my real interest. How do I drink this thing, slow or fast? Doesn't matter. Can you milk a cow? <laughs> do you have a cow, or, or is that just a social question? Wonder, Nebraska and all. I can milk a cow. You're not taking your medicine. No, I don't want to go to sleep. Oh, please go to sleep. That's a funny thing to say to a man sitting up in a bar. <laughs> well, let's not pursue that. Why don't you ever get up and go to the ladies' room? Hmm? Please. Why? I haven't had a chance to look at your legs. Oh. Aren't there any bright bars? Is that all you have to say? I can't even remember what you're talking about. Oh, my leg. Well, what's it to say about your legs? I think I'll sit over here. Now I lay me down to sleep. I'm staying at the Fairmont in case this renders me speechless. Do you have a taxi fare? Why? Take me home. I don't have any money with me. You mean that drink's on me? I guess I forgot to mention it. Huh? Why were you so sure I'd have money? A girl who can milk a cow. <laughs> Bless mommy, bless daddy, bless my teddy bear. But most of all, bless Julie, who's paying for all this. There's some reaction already. Cause, dry martini. In fact, fuzzy fuzzy. Please, come bring your face over here in the light. Uh-uh. You have perfect legs. My speech getting thickish? Yes. Suppose this doesn't work. Well, then I'm out a buck or a buck and a half. I see. That means nothing to you that I will have to become a drunken bum. <laughs> nothing. Get me drunk again sometime, will you? Good night. Good night, Julie. Good night, Bill. Oh, hi, Sam. Dr. Beck been quiet up there, well behaved and quiet? Him? <laughs> he sure has been quiet. It's coffee time. I'm going to bring coffee to him. Do you want some? No, Mrs. Beck, thank you, but I'll take it if you want. I gotta go up that way. Oh, now, Sam, you know that would leave me with a very empty day. You nearly waited. Is that what you think we are, newlyweds? Aren't you? Uh-oh. Oh, maybe a year? Five? Is that true? Five years? Five and a little more. Thank you, Sam, very much. Daddy. Hello? Oh, hello, Grant. Hi. Bill's over at the observatory again. Well, you could call him over there, but he probably wouldn't hear or wouldn't answer anyway. I don't suppose I'll ever understand what a theoretical physicist needs with a telescope. <laughs> Whenever I ask him, he just says, would I have understood what Newton needed with an apple? What's the problem, Grant? Oh, I need a little help. We need a little help. A new rocket we're working on. Something wrong, very intense lateral vibrations. Lateral what? You mean it shakes? In a word, yes. <laughs> well, I'll tell him. He'll call you later.
into the chamber a bit. You now, eat every bit of that or no television tonight. <laughs> something. How long are you sitting there? Oh, just be quiet and let me enjoy the ride, will you? Julie, you never told me you'd had rheumatic fever. Oh, I, I had it my sixth... Uh... No, my seventh year. I spent the year in bed with it. They told me to forget it, so I forgot it. Do you have any pretty bed jackets at home? Nice frilly ones? Oh, I'm not a very frilly type. I've got a heart thing, Jim. I, I do have it. <sighs> Going to drop dead or something? Now, you know better than that. You sat out there and watched heart patient after heart patient outlive some of the so-called healthy ones. Well, you learned to live with it. Beginning with two, three weeks in bed, Read those nice long books. Whoever gets to read them all the way through. Lie still and relax. I can't tell Bill this. Bill Beck is not a child, Julie, even though you treat him like one. The truth is, it's, uh, it's just a matter of time for me, isn't it? In a sense, that's true of all of us. But since we're talking of Julie Beck, I'd say it depends on you. Oh, I feel fine. I I felt great right up to the moment of that attack, and I feel great now. Yes. You don't really know Bill. He's told me, and I think it's true. He, he's told me he started living the day we met. I know I did. I think if he thought I were dying, he'd start... Dying too? I know it would be that way with me if uh, conditions were reversed. You see, it, it's not just a, a nice marriage. It's, it's a love affair. One that's been going on for five years. Five plus. I wish we'd had a child. We'd give him some tie with life. I wish we'd had a baby. Well, we didn't. Have you ever thought of adopting? Oh, yes, I have. Here I am, taking up all your time. Just like those patients I used to hate the worst, messing up all your appointments. Just tape me up or something and I'll get on home. Tape you? Oh, I, I came into town to have a sprained ankle look like, looked at. But just, uh, just say it's fractured and I have to stay in bed for a while. Well, people don't usually stay in bed for fractured ankles. What you fractured was your tibia. What's that? <laughs> You'll see. Nurse, please. It might be kind of a slightly weird-looking cast. Remember, I'm an internist. Funny. It'd be funny keeping something from Bill Beck. I never thought I would, ever. Yes, Dr. Miller? Oh, yes, I'll need some plaster of Paris, please. Yes, right away. Jim, it's... It's a hard thing, isn't it, adopting a child? Lots of rules and all. First thing is to get you healthy. You know, 
this month of Mr. and Mrs. Frazier was really very nice. Like the best trial month I ever had. I'm sure they really liked you, too. I'm sure they would have kept you if they could. No, I just didn't work out again. You are hitting you No, I just plain did not work out. But as I said, it was about the best trial month I ever had. You? No, thank you. Don't worry. I won't cry. I'm glad to be back. I like it here. Oh, Hitty. Well, welcome back. Missed you. Thank you, Miss Brinkmasters. How's Miss First Floor, Miss Sixth Floor, and everybody? Fine, Hitty. Well, I have to hurry and feed everybody their dinners. I know just how they like everything. Third time. Guess you get used to it. Darling, take it easy. You'll knock Grant's head off. Well, if he kills me, there are a lot of others where I came from. He can't get the whole Department of Defense up here to play baseball with him. Oh, I give up. I gotta get back down the hill anyway. Why don't you take up chess like a self-respecting scientist? I wish you'd stay and have lunch with us, Grant. He may not care, but I love the chance to see another human being. And he should. He could lose the power of speech up here. Doesn't he talk to you? Only in the simplest language. What are you so busy working on? We could use you 12 hours a day. I'm doing some pure research on the problems of heat. And the hottest thing around is the sun. After I've finished, maybe I'll have nothing at all. Oh, maybe I'll have some answers about jet fuels, metals that won't melt at high speeds, heat-sensitive devices that would guide missiles. All right. My mouth's watering. I'll leave you alone for a while. Two years should about do it. Bill, you come back up this weekend if you have time. We'll give a party. A party? Not a hanging, a party. We'll invite Grant and everybody else we know, both of them. Well, thank you, Julie. Thank you very much. Put it right over here, Sarah. He'll be up in a minute. Lunch, Man Mountain! Bill? Ta-da! Sorry, Sarah. Well, that's quite all right, Mr. Beck, I'm sure. Well, what's for lunch? Uh, meatloaf. I don't know. I can't remember there's somebody else in the house. Always bumping into her or something. You do like her, though, don't you? Oh, I like her fine, sure. It's just it'll be good when we have the house to ourselves again. How's it like? You feel healed to me. I have a seismographic touch. Well, Jim says the x-rays look fine now. Cast coming off Thursday. Uh-huh. Not that I won't miss it. Nice to know where you are all the time. Bill? Hmm? This is such a big house. Uh, three floors and an attic, a big barn of a house. Well, this will be up in 11 years, and we can move if you want to. <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. I meant, couldn't you maybe get used to the idea of, of having a third person, or maybe even a third or fourth person living in it with us? 
What's the problem? What would you say to our adopting a child? What for? <laughs> well, not for anything, just for... Don't you think it would be nice? Of course, if you don't want to. You lonely with me working all the time, is that it? Oh, no, no, darling. I, I don't know. Lying here these last few weeks, I I've been thinking about it. Just thinking about it. How about one old enough to play catch with? A little boy that can play baseball might as well be of some use. Uh, I'll see if maybe the Dodgers run an adoption service. Was that a stupid thing I said? You have your heart set on one that can't play ball? A girl, maybe? Darling, you get whatever flavor, size, or type of child you want. I love you very much. But give a little edge to one who throws overhand. That's why we sent for you. She's failed on three adoptions. Can't seem to relate to the group. Well, judging from her history, that isn't so surprising. <laughs> this is Mr. Reinecke, Hitty. He came all the way down from San Francisco just to, to talk to you. <laughs> Kitty and I are going to take a walk uh, up into the fields. Huh? Kitty, there are all kinds of funny businesses in the world. Mine is one of the funniest. My business is talking to children. Isn't that silly? <laughs> I, uh... Try to help children to uh, sort out the difference between true things and make up things. Oh, Hitty, Hitty. Well, about true things and make up things. We have to ask ourselves, for instance, what would make a child think, uh, pretend, make up that she was, uh, say, a horse? Well, a horse is very much wanted. People need horses. Uh, they're curried and groomed and loved. A horse is hitty. <laughs> Excuse me, I, I was chasing one of the children. Oh, I wonder, could you tell me the way to Building C, Boys Block? I'm afraid I've gotten lost. It's uh, right up there. Hitty! Hitty! Be careful! What is she being, a horse? Yes. I was a horse till I was 12 or 13. Give her some sugar. Well, I didn't bring any sugar. Oh, pretend sugar. I'm trying to teach her to separate reality from fantasy. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Oh, no, not at all. Thank you. The boys' buildings are all up there. Oh. Thank you. Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I'm sorry. What's a horse? Always a horse. Now, look here, young lady. You're not a horse anymore. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. That's step number one. Now, our second step... <laughs> Hi. Hitty, where are you? Is your name Hitty? Somebody's calling you. You're gonna take me to him? Give me to him? Mm-hmm. All right. You here to adopt somebody? Uh-huh. Don't adopt me. I usually don't work out. Just what's wrong with you? I can't stop thinking things up. Oh, I see. If I stopped thinking things up, then I wouldn't. Well, then you wouldn't what? Then I wouldn't be anybody. Anybody at all. Hitty! Uh, we're coming. Uh, she's with me. His name is Reinecker. Mr. Reinecker. We're coming, Mr. Reinecker. Well, goodbye, Hitty. It's Hitty with an H. Short for my hittable. My hittable? My mother must have liked cats or something. It's a sort of good name for a cat. Hitty! Hitty, where are you? Oh, Hitty. Oh, oh Hitty. That was very bad to run away from me. She's not going to run from you anymore, are you? Well, I guess I don't get very far. I... Hey, Hitty! She's afraid to lose her imaginings. She's afraid she won't be anybody at all, then. She's a nice, bright little girl. She'll be all right. Her trouble comes from an illness she had several years ago. Spent almost a year in bed. Well, what is it? Oh, nothing. I, I was just thinking. I guess it happens to a lot of children, alone for a year like that. It happened to me, too. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Right, Hitty? We're going to make some sense now, aren't we? Yes, sir. some flowers. To Professor Hoffenstein, one and one half Nobel Prizes, you emptied the ashtrays. But for an eight-year-old girl, you rearrange all the furniture, get me dusted off, bake a cake. Is that a new dress? Well, she has to like us too, you know, Bill. They won't let us have her. And, uh, and the orphanage lady, she's... Yes, a... honey, you told me that. Don't worry. The orphanage lady's gonna meet a man so crazy to adopt a child, so... So deranged with thwarted paternalism that it's... Well, the only thing that worries me, darling, is you're such an inferior liar. Oh, they're here. Mm. Oh, Bill, that's the time with a spot on it. So it is. Oh, we can't have that now, can we? Hello, Mr. Beck. Hello. I'm afraid we're a little early. Oh, that's all right. The Hitty? Don't you remember me, Hitty? Last week when you were playing being a horse. I told you I usually don't work out. Oh, now, Hitty, I explained that it was only for the day. You'll be back at the orphanage in time for supper. Are you so very anxious to get back there? It's Friday night. They usually serve cheese dishes or tuna fish, sometimes macaroni. Oh, I see. Well, it's pretty hard to compete with that. But it was very nice of you to ask me, though. Thank you. Oh, it's very nice of you to come, Hitty. Is Dr. Beck at home? Oh, yes, yes, he's here. Won't you come in? Thank you. I'm looking forward to seeing him again. That was such a short interview at the office. Well, isn't this such a nice room, Hitty? Well, Hitty, what do you say? 
Isn't it such a nice room? That's what I said. Kitty doesn't have to say anything. That's one of the rules of this house. Nobody has to say anything. As a matter of fact, sometimes no one says a word for days at a time. So, you're Hitty. I've heard so much about you. <laughs> you didn't tell me you were married. Uh, well, my name's Bill, and I come as a shock to lots of people. Bill's been very anxious to meet you, Hitty. He, he's hoping that you'll like it here and maybe want to come back and stay with us. Aren't you, Bill? Oh, my, yes. Yes, I am. Uh, my name's Bill. Oh, I do arithmetic. That's my worst thing. Speak directly to Dr. Beck, Kitty. Look at him and speak right to him. Now, he won't bite you. That's my worst thing, arithmetic. Well, Mrs. Beck, why don't you and Hitty talk for a while, and perhaps Dr. Beck and I could go into another room. Just a few questions. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, won't you come into the, what do you call it, the library? Take off your hat and coat, mind your manners, and don't spit in your teeth. I know you must think you've filled out hundreds of forms already. However, I'm sure these few questions won't be too much for you to answer. There. Don't you like tea? Cambric tea? Once when I was six, I spat in it. Are you going to like that? Mm-hmm. As soon as Bill comes back, Miss McMaster's. You know, Hitty, if... This would have worked out, and, and you would have come to us. You and I would have a real job to do, taking care of Bill. Nobody took care of Mr. Fraser where I was last. There are, there are special people, Hitty, people who are... Well, look, you were playing being a horse. There are kinds of horses. Were you playing being a plow horse? I was a thoroughbred. I raced. I only raced when I was a horse. Well, then you know what thoroughbreds are. They're, they're smarter and faster. And, but all the same, they, they sort of need more care than just plain horses. Well, Bill is special like that. He's the kind of man who, who might change the world for the rest of us. And they're called geniuses. They invented the wheel and, and rain hats and, and cans for tuna fish and the atom bomb. So if you come to us, it'd be a job you'd be taking on, a very important one. Do you think you could help me take care of Bill and, and love him? Do you love him? Very much. Could I have two big spoons of sugar? The second floor says it'll ruin my teeth. But just today. Of course. But you didn't answer my question, Hitty. What? About Bill. I never loved anybody before. Before what? Before you. Maybe I'll even give you three sugars. What can I call you? Julie. You'd call us Julie and Bill. Oh, really, Dr. Well. I hope you saved some tea for us. Oh, yes, there's plenty. Thank you. Everything's just fine here. We had a nice talk about unilateral adoption. Uh, no sugar, please. Oh, you did? Yes, you. They, uh, they don't approve of them. Oh, we certainly don't. It's amazing how many husbands will go into an adoption just to please a wife, instead of a fur coat or something. Or if only all husbands were as eager as Dr. Beck. It's a rare thing to meet a man so totally oriented toward bilateral adoption, so really anxious for a child. Now, if you both will come to my office next Wednesday, we can discuss this further. We had them do it just for you. I bet. They're grape pickers from Mexico, most of them. And that's Spanish they're singing. I sound just like a teacher, don't I? <laughs> Wouldn't he like to see it? Could we call him? Bill Hitty, not he. Bill, could we call him? Mm-hmm. 
Here, pull the bell bell. Sometimes real things are much more interesting than made-up things. Oh, it's, it's really important, Hitty. You see, so much of the world's miseries come from what you call making up. Superstitions, bad things like uh, Egyptian sun gods. Egyptian sun gods? Witchcraft, holy trees, black cats. Those are all make-up things. Now, it, it's truth. It's fact that... I... We just wanted you to see them. Oh, Hitty, hurry down and answer it. Hurry up and get there before Sarah does. What? Quick, quick, quick. This is the time of night when wonderful things ring our bell. <laughs> I've hardly seen you all day. Oh, darling, it was her first day. And, and wait a minute. Come to think of it, we saw each other at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yes, but... But not alone, you were going to say. We haven't seen each other alone. Bill... Yeah! This is how they begin parties in Mexico. And it's full of presents. You whack it with a stick. You whack it real hard. You see, I brought you these so you can help me in the garden. Hello, Hitty. Oh, Hello, Hitty. You're our dear. You're our dear. We are glad to meet you. We are glad to meet you. Hi, hi, hi. You. We are glad to meet you. Hi, hi, hi. Welcome, Hitty. Welcome, Hitty. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. You're the one, Julie. You're the one, William. You're the thing that Julie. You're the thing that William. Pretty titty, most neat titty. Pretty titty, pretty 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 titty. Pret
real animals, the real world, they can be pretty interesting without some brain sitting around making up a new species. When I hear, oh, let us see what there really is in the tip of a blade of grass or a drop of water. Anything you say, 21 feet. Hey, look. Look, you get slides, too. A piece of mica, pond water. Wait till she sees a human hair magnified. From 12 to 14 years old. I entered college when I was 14. Some people don't. Got my first slide room when I was six. Well, I guess you ought to know, but she's very bright. This should be like it's a very big seller all over the country. Mm. All right. Here, wrap them up. Put them in a sack. Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't suppose you do carry slide rules. and everything was from you and me, you were left out. Well, I kind of wanted to get her something on my own. She's not asleep? No, she's not asleep. Oh, well, in the morning. Oh, there are some things always worth waking up for. Kitty. Kitty, darling. Oh. Hi, Bill. My present. I brought you a present, too. Oh, a cannon? <laughs> oh, no, no, idiot. It's what we call a microscope. You see, with it, you can see the way... Ooh, Bill, it's Ralph. Ralph! How you been, boy? Well, I'm glad you like him. Long-lost cousin or something? Cousin? He's my brother. Ralph, the sleek stallion. You see, we were separated by Indians and... Well, it's a pretty toy horse, and it reminds me of the kind of thoroughbred I always was when I was a horse. I see. I call horses like that that might have been related to me. I call them Rolf. Oh, family name? Exactly. You too. Nobody will ever get any sleep. They're lovely presents, Bill. Oh, yes. Oh, Bill. It's nicer even than, than Brownie, the big bear. It's... Now I have everything. Oh. And thanks for the micro, micro, thank you for this. No, 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 it's a little sharp around the edges for that. Oh, my darling. Can't you be? Well, good night. Pretty good little microscope. Oh, darling, she'll grow up to like things like that. And you're a wizard picking horses. Oh, I didn't even pick it. <laughs> As Hitty says, she has everything. And so do I. Sunday. If there's mistletoe, it's Christmas. Foolproof, nearly. Doesn't he ever want to know if it's on smaller day, like Tuesday or Washington's birthday? Never. People waste a lot of time worrying about things like that. Thank you, Hitty. You're welcome. Darling. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> I met Hitty. Uh, I was going to say, wouldn't you like to pour Bill's coffee for him? Think you could manage that? I'll try.
Thank you, Hitty, very much. Hitty, Bill always likes to have his robe handy. Just in case we should be asked to a dance or something dressy. <laughs> More coffee? Oh, yes, a little. The same way? Exactly the same way, please. Looks so we've lost him for the moment. Come on, we'll go make beds. He is helpless, isn't he? Are you sure they're getting to know each other out there? Funny, with everybody else in the world, she just talk, talk, talk. Oh, well, give them time. Complicated business, this trying to dream up a complete family, sort of halfway along. Well, I always have wondered just why you did get such a middle-aged young woman. Well, you have to wait forever before you can get an infant. What's all the hurry? It's gonna be a good hot fire. Do you think we ought to call them in, or uh, do you think we should make them stay there until one or the other says something? Or until they starve to death, whichever <laughs> is the sooner. Hard to the right! Boy, that was a mighty close one. Oh, just what was it, Hitty? Hitty! I'm oh, sorry. What was it, White Hunter? <sighs> Hippopotamus, probably. Half speed ahead! You sure it's safe? Can't be real sure of nothing in these here waters. Let's give her a try. Okay. Man-eating fish here about. Don't put so much of the finger overboard. The smell of blood drives them mad. Crow phantoms, flying bomb. Ah! Ah! Rope, I dropped rope in the water. Rope fell in right, the water. All right, he'll float. The man-eating fish, they'll tear him apart. Hitty, Hitty! There are no man-eating fish in Lake Sears, California, USA. It's all something you made up. Uh, you see? He's fine. He's all right. Yes. Thank you. What is it? What happened? It was my fault. Well, come on in. Lunch is about... I mean, I have cooked the wildebeest, and it's right reef. That's what we say in Africa. We're in Lake Sears, California, USA. Bill got mad about the other, about Africa. Well, no, honey, not mad. Well, maybe not exactly mad, but we're back from Africa. Well, all ashore that's going ashore. Oops, it is easy. Sarah? Sarah? Sarah's out today, darling. What's the ma... Oh, Bill. Yes, the blackboards, the equations. Four or five months of work. Four or five months of irreplaceable... I... It wasn't Sarah, Bill. I thought I'd clean off all the used-up arithmetic. I was schoolroom monitor for one whole year, and I cleaned blackboards very well, everybody said. I'm sorry, Julie. 
Hetty, darling. Uh, Bill, she didn't mean any harm. But Hetty, Bill's work things, you uh, might... Of course she didn't mean any harm. Hetty, it's all right. It's, I can remember them. It's not as bad as I thought. Just don't, you know, keep on doing it. Don't ever erase anything again, will you? I never, ever will. Thank you, Bill. You go back to work and I'll be down in a minute. You start on the other closet and I'll be down in a minute. Can you remember them? She was just trying to be helpful, I know. Just trying to be helpful. No, I, I can't remember 35 or 40 different equations. I'm sorry, Bill. Oh, end of incident. Nobody's fault. Maybe I can remember some of them. And if I can just remember the basic three or four... Doctor's answering service. Dr. James Miller's office does not answer. May I take a message? That number is Douglas 38100. Doctor's answering service. I will try to reach Dr. Miller. 8th Street Surgical Clinic. Possible. Student answering service didn't call me for fully an hour. Did you take her pulse? What's her pulse? Pulse? Oh, it's just flu. Grip, it used to be called. I'm sure that's all it is. The way I drove, I thought maybe she'd broken her tibia again. Julie? <laughs> One broken leg to a customer. It's only Hitty. Only Hitty? Well, you know, kids are supposed to be sick sometimes. That's what they do. It's a business they're in. Oh, Jim, thanks for coming. Poor baby, so miserable. Oh, Julie, honey, we're going to be really very late. Oh, well, maybe you better telephone them. I'll be as quick as I can. <coughs> Hello, Hitty. Hello, Doctor. Party or something tonight? Oh, no, just a scientific thing, a once-a-month thing. Am I causing too much trouble? Oh, Hitty, of course you're not. any trouble. Just keep her in bed. Only thing is, if her temperature should shoot up, call me. You were right, Bill. Just flu. Plain old flu. Uh, poor little hitty, you feel rotten with it. Julie, are you going to take a coat or anything? Bill, would you mind very much if I didn't go? She's so sort of forlorn up there. I know Sarah will do anything she can, but I'd feel better. Oh, boy. Hitty is going to be asleep. I'm going to be awake or half awake. Please, you understand, Bill. Do we have to change our whole life on her account? Bill, she's eight years old. I can't leave her alone tonight. It's not that I don't want to. I can't. Please, Bill. Okay. My golly, he's acting like an infant. I'm sorry, Jim. First time I ever heard either of you so much as raise your voice to the other. Red letter day. I don't like to see any patient look like that, Julie. Even those with healthy tibias. Sit down, try to relax. She's so sweet, and so is he. They just don't seem to reach each other. Well, that's what these trial adoption periods are for, Julie. To find out. What? Oh, I didn't mean that, I'm sorry. 
Of course it's going to work out. In time, she and Bill... No, I'm not being fair to you. I'm not being fair to my profession. I'm not even being fair to that little girl. Listen. I know this sounds cruel, heartless, abrupt. But the worst thing for you, Julie, is bottling something like this up inside yourself. Inner tension and worry. Remember, adoption was a little bit my prescription. Well, now I'm going to have to look you in the eye and say what you know to be true. You know it too. This little girl and this husband aren't a good match. Every day it's going to be harder for you, harder on Hitty, and more complicated for Bill. Send her back. What? Send her back. I could no more, I could no more do that. Jim, that's impossible. It's possible and necessary. I love Hitty. I love her too much. More than Bill? She's a child. I love her and I love him. Well, you're in this together, you and Bill. Talk it over with him. We're not really in it together. You've seen that. You just say, go ahead and do whatever you want. How can I do it to her? Well, I'm not asking you to strangle the child, Julie. You can keep in touch with Hitty, visit her, make her sure of your devotion. All I know is that she's more physically resilient than you are. Act. Don't stew and worry. I have to go now. Guess for dinner. Thanks, Jim. Sorry. I know it's a long trip. Not long so much as perpendicular. the nicest former employee I ever had. I couldn't afford any more like you. In the third hypothesis, that all previous propellants are in their way obsolete, or at least less than ideal. Then we come face to face with Professor Reinhardt's experiments and with high energy research. I never thought I'd be taken seriously. Either Professor Reinhardt or energy research. <laughs> Is there a way of creating by means of radiation a new combination, however unstable, however derived, that might give us a new chemistry for these propellants? This was the question. Firstly, each molecule has represented a much larger amount of energy. Secondly, the template. was crumbed up chicken. Didn't eat much. How about a sandwich? We had a fight. Us. I didn't eat any dinner either. Well, suppose I cook a nice steak onion sandwich for both of us. Well, maybe a layer of peanut butter to add body, a soup song of jelly for surprise, and one single string bean for help. Done this in a long time, have we? She's been having dreams. It's the fever, I think. 
I'll just go up and have a look at her. I'll be right back. I keep acting as if she had pneumonia or something, and she hasn't, but I can't seem to help it. It's all right, baby. Bill? Bill? It'll be daylight soon, honey. Let's get to sleep. Hmm? Pop, you'd be quiet. I feel fine, I feel fine, I feel fine. Oh, yes, it isn't even up to normal. I guess you Louis! Can... In here, Eddie, I'm in here. It's been two days, no temperature, like you said. Can I go swimming? I won't get my head wet. I'm as well as I'll ever be. Yes. Uh, Eddie, we have to have a talk. I was waiting... At... Just tell me first if we can go swimming so I can put it in my diary. You see, I've written in three days. Yesterday, half today, and next Christmas. Next Christmas? We all sang Christmas carols, and outside it rained cats and dogs, and I was hoping for a white Christmas. Oh, well. Can we go swimming? Is anything wrong? I've done something? Oh, no, darling, no. Eddie... Remember when, when you were so sick last week and, and the doctor came over? Last Tuesday. I could put that in, too. How do you spell threw up? Eddie. If it's about fact or fiction, I know we really haven't had next Christmas yet. No, it, it's not about that. It's about... Eddie, I've been thinking a lot these last few weeks. Ever, ever since the doctor was here. Over and over about how sometimes we, we want things so badly, so very badly, that we don't realize we're being selfish. You see, Hitty, listen to what I'm saying. You see, Hitty, nothing belongs to us that's bought at the expense of other people. We must. We... We should give it up. And no matter what cost. What is it? Maybe... Maybe this isn't a good time for our talk. I think I'm getting a headache. Oh, Julie, you caught my flu. Julie! We'll talk about all of this tomorrow. I think you better get... Get Sarah. Get Bill. Oh, yes, get Bill. Sarah, Sarah! Julie's sick!
Yeah. Should have told you. I've got a heart thing. Oh, it's going to be all right. You bet it is. Just shocked me, surprised me. Tucking me in. I remember, honey. Julie, darling, I think you ought to shut up. Please shut up. It's me, Grant. I'm taking you home, Bill. Now, Bill, listen. It's been three days since the funeral. Three days. We've all been worried, everybody. Sarah, Hitty, and me. Now, it's time you went home, Bill. Come on, Bill, you're coming home. shave. How fast do whiskers grow? No, Bill. Bill, you're home. I bet you haven't slept at all. That happens to him. Julie told me once. He's all right. Thank you for finding him. Well, I think I'd better help. No! You. I'm going to do everything. I know how to take care of him. Thank you. He's home now.
pull down the shade, Bill? You going to sleep? Is there money in the house? Food, everything you and Sarah need? Mr. Allen's taking care of things. Miss McMaster's has called twice on the telephone. Oh? My lady at the orphanage. You know. Oh, yes. What does she want? She asked to talk to Julie. She wants to talk to her about my third polio shot. It's due. So, Julie? Both times I answered. Sarah hates the telephone. I said Julie wasn't in. Hitty. That's what Julie told me to say. I asked her, and she said, tell Miss McMaster's I'm not in, and when Bill gets back, he'll take care of everything. When did Julie tell you this? Last night and the night before. Hitty. I've talked to you about true things. The true thing is that our Julie, we have to face that our Julie is dead. No, she isn't. Ralph the sneak stallion brings her to me. Should I go get him? Would you like to see Julie? Hitty, we'll talk in the morning. Glad you're back, Bill. Sarah and Ralph and Julie and I. I'm just going to sit here and eat the breakfast you gave me. Take it away. Julie said... Take it away. Look at it. Look how pretty it is. Julie said to spoil you today. Treat it just like it was Sunday. Except for the paper, 
It's only a plain day paper. And I called Mr. Allen. He's coming you over. You what? You what, Hitty? I telephoned up to him. Julie thinks you'd like... Just be a little girl, will you? Just be a little girl and leave me alone. The flower was a joke of Julie, something of Julie's and mine. There are things I can't stand, Hitty. Julie is dead. Hitty, lead back there. Ask Sarah to come up and do that. I'm sorry, Hitty. If I talk to her every night, she can't be dead. Not the way you mean dead. Everything all right? He wants to see you. What is it, Hitty? He just wants to see you as all, sir. Hello, please. Would you call a number for me? I don't dial very good, usually. I'm a child. Yes. Monterey 2189. Hello? This is Hitty. Could I speak to Miss McMasters or Miss First Floor? Hitty. Hitty! I'm from there. Miss McMasters, Julie Beck's dead. Hitty, I should have told you and I didn't. She's dead and Bill doesn't want me. So I guess you'd better come and get me. All right. Masters. Well, you've grown taller. I can see you're taller. Can I ever go out and see her grave sometime, Julie? I didn't want to ask Bill to take me, and, and Sarah can't drive. Well, we'll think about all things like that later. There's plenty of time. I'm going to ask Mr. Reinecke to come back and talk to you. Remember? Do you think I'm going to be a horse again? Hope not, Hitty. You remember what he said last time? That it was a way children have of, of getting their minds away from unpleasant facts, of being something loved and wanted. And, and children, you remember Hitty, of course. Hi. I'll move away from the window. I didn't think you were coming back this time. It wasn't Hitty's fault. The lady died. She'll see you all later. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. I have to hurry and feed everybody their dinners. They've probably missed me if they weren't too busy just playing all the time. You didn't take your little animals with you? I thought this time... They live here. It isn't good for animals to move around all the time. With people, that doesn't matter. But animals... I see.
love. This is little Dickie. Oscar, how have you been? Me too. I've been fine. This time you worked out. You understand what I'm saying? It's a big step forward. You worked out just fine. What happened to Mrs. Beck was... that had nothing to do with you. Yes. Well, all right, Hitty. Come along. I'm gonna take you up. But I... I don't usually go up yet. No buts. I want to make sure you're squared away properly. Come along. Keep an eye on you. Fine. I'm fine. I'm asleep. Be sure that everything was all right with you two, my two people. Now, come on, let's hurry up and finish. Maybe we can get Bill to take us for a swim. Bill will take you for a swim. Well, what do you know? He heard us. He's with us.
Julie. Julie, it's me, Hitty. I've moved us all. I've moved back to the orphan place. The place where you got me, where I was before. Julie, the place by the ocean. Rolf, Rolf, take me where she met me. Rolf, she'll remember the horse place. Giddy up, boy. That's a boy. Take us to Julie's place. Sam, that you? Who is it? Anybody there? Sarah, are you back? Yes. Telephone for you. Miss McMasters. Hello, Miss McMasters. I'm sorry to bother you. This is Mr. Beck. Bill Beck. Yes, Dr. Beck. Oh, Miss McMasters is, is pretty embarrassing. Miss McMasters, I'm sure there are lots of explanations, nerves, fatigue, a sense of guilt, perhaps, but I have a feeling about Hitty. Is, is she all right? Is she safely in bed? Is she all right? Dr. Beck, we have a complete bed check every night. There are 181 children and young people here, all safely tucked in. You know, every adoptive parent thinks we ignore their... Come in. Excuse me, Dr. Beck. Miss McMasters, have you seen Hitty? Hitty? Well, her bed's empty, I thought so. I'll be right there, right away. Uh, Dr. Beck, I'll call you back in a few minutes. I'm sure it's a false alarm. I'll call you right back. Yes, I'll be at home. Hello, Grant. Yeah, Bill Beck. Look, come by the house as soon as you can.
Dr. Beck. It, it's Dr. Beck. Dr. Beck is the gentleman. Now, William Beck, I'm her father. I'm a little girl's adopted father. You leave somebody at your house? Yes, this is Mr. Allen. His wife's there. Usually they go back to the last house. Dr. Beck, I don't know how I can... I wasn't going to look at all... You any ideas of where she might have gone? We're patrolling along Route 72, the obvious route. Anywhere else? What was she wearing? They're checking. Don't know yet. Did you take a horse? Horse? The kid's got a horse? Well, a, a toy horse. Very fond of it. I don't think she'd leave it. I can find out about that, too. We're making home in headquarters. Yes. Keep remembering all the newspaper stories. Little stories on pages three and four, the things that happen to kids. Choke to death on lollipop sticks, eat a million aspirin, decide they're birds and jump out of ten-story windows. Now, Hitty's pretty smart. I thought I'd go crazy losing Julie. And now if Hitty... If I've sent that little girl away, Grant, if I've lost them both... What is it? What you said about the toy horse, Rolf the something stallion, and what Julie told me about when she met Hitty. Miss McMasters! Miss McMasters! Where did they meet? Where was the place that Julie and Hitty first met, all mixed up with, with being a horse and so forth? Well, I'll show you. I, I'm sure. Well, they're supposed to have looked out there. But we can look again. to come. What? How'd you know to come, Bill? Julie told you. Yes, Hitty? Yes, she did. You see? Yes, Hitty, honey. I see. I told you he wasn't dead. Not dead that way. Yeah. 